Elizaveta Demidenko, a water and environmental law expert with over six years of experience, is based in Stockholm and works with the Global Water Partnership on Sustainable Development Goal 6 and Transboundary Water Cooperation. She specializes in identifying policy bottlenecks, facilitating dialogues, and building water governance capacity. Previously, she analyzed environmental impacts of armed conflict on water and energy in Ukraine with OSCE, contributed to energy efficiency and climate projects with GIZ, and supported the Water Convention Team in UNIS. Elizabeth holds degrees in international law and has completed courses in IWRM and international water law. So today I'm going to be speaking about the SDG 6 indicators 6.1 and 6.5.2, uh, which are, in my view, a very good means to measure the effectiveness of the water policies. So a little bit about what we do, who we are, and why do we have those insights on, on, the, SDG, um, on the SDG 6. So we are the Global Water Partnership, uh, which is a multi-stakeholder partnership of over 35,000 partner organizations from about 187 countries globally. Uh, that means that we have 13 regional water partnerships, which are our regional offices. And then we also have country water partnerships in 77 countries. And then on the left side, you can also see the, the breakdown from among our uh, partner organizations. Um, and in the middle, you can see about um, kind of the map where we operate. So you see we mostly work in the developing countries, a little bit of those in Eastern Europe, but mostly in the global south. Um, and I'm joining you today from Stockholm, Sweden, where we have our little headquarter office um, working with uh, different regions, as you see on the map. So to start the presentation, uh, I wanted to premise with a question uh, for all of us to reflect on how can we use the SDG indicator framework to assess water policy? We all, we all know about it, we have heard about it, but if we speak about specifically about the indicator framework and what's, what's in there, we can see that um, they are lacking environment-specific legal indicators. So there is a lot of kind of soft, uh, um, uh, soft goals and targets on, on where we want to go. Uh, but there is not that many environment-specific ones. Um, several of the indicators refer to some legal aspects of countries' progress on environmental matters. They say that the countries should strive to, um, to incorporate the principles of environmental law in their uh, national legislation. They should strive to certain, you know, um, include the cooperative agreements on water, etc. But diving into specifically the, the indicator framework, it's only about 15 out of 169 targets that refer to, to law in general, whether it's uh, environmental law or any other type of law, uh, while only 93 out of 231 address the environmental matters. So you can see that um, the codification of those environmental protection measures is not really super high on the agenda. But uh, let's look at how we can uh, use the existing framework to measure how effective our water policies are, even despite that there is not that many um, legal indicators in, in the whole framework. So if we look at the SDG 6, um, it comprises of 12 indicators and eight targets that measure progress towards the SDG 6. And this is the UN Water Integrated Monitoring Initiative for SDG 6. This is how the UN has agreed and all of the countries that are members of the UN have agreed on the indicator framework. And then also you can see um, on the screen, perhaps you can see my mouse here, that um, the 6.5.1 and 6.5.2, and those relate to the integrated water resource management. That's the part that we're gonna be talking about today. However, there is uh, um, several other parts of the wheel that relate more to like sanitation, water use efficiency, water quality, or perhaps the participation aspects uh, that's, you know, other sides of the same coin. If we look specifically at the SDG target 6.5, it has two indicators. So first 6.5.1, which is degree of IWRM, the abbreviation that we use quite a lot, integrated water resource management. So the degree of how that approach is implemented in, in the national systems. And then 6.5.2 is the proportion of transboundary basin area covered by an operational agreement for water cooperation. 
So how many water bodies in a country that cross their borders that they share with their neighbors are covered by an operational agreement, which essentially means that um, the SDG target 6.5 covers all aspects of the integrated water resource management. And we are aiming by 2030 to implement it at all levels, including the transboundary. And you can see that 651 um, is under the custodian agency, UN Environment, UN Environment Program, and then the 652 is dealt with by UNIC and UNESCO to other UN agencies that are responsible for ensuring that we get uh, where we said we will. And so speaking about I would item around, this is the abbreviation that I mentioned, what, what is it and how do we understand it? So GWP defines it as a process which promotes the coordinated development and management of water, land, and related resources in order to maximize the resultant economic and social welfare in an equitable manner, but without compromising the sustainability of vital ecosystems. And you can see the wheel here, where the in, inside of the wheel, this is how um, uh, GWP understands the definition, and this is how we break it down. Um, so in, in, in the center, you really have the dimensions of either realm one, two, three, four, enabling environments. So our policies and laws that allow us to manage water sustainably. Institutions of participation. So those agencies that implement the set strategies or policies. Then you have management instruments and that can be you know environmental impact assessment tools and other things. And then finally, you have financing, so the money uh, that is going to finance the sustainable water management cycle. Um, it also includes the water security dimension. So um, you can see the different aspects of water security can be achieved through the implementation of the IWRM. And that in turn leads to three E's or three um, aspects of the sustainable development, how the countries have understood it in, since the beginning of the thousands which are economic efficiency, environmental sustainability, and social equity. Moving on to the SDG indicator 6.5.1. Uh, here you see like the approximately the process of how countries report on the program. So first, of course, is the UN uh, that invites the countries to undertake data collection on the SDG 6.5.1. So basically, the UN invites member states to report on their progress uh, the next step would be that each country assigns a national focal point. So they would coordinate the multi-stakeholder consultation process. Um, the next step would be the stakeholders of so people in the country from different stakeholder groups like civil society, private sector, government, academia. They would discuss the survey results. So they would discuss how the country is doing. Uh, there, is a, there is a questionnaire with about 33 questions. Um, and the different groups say, okay, so I actually think that the progress on, let's say, financing is not that great. So the idea is that they would agree on the scores in, in a workshop. And the next step from that would be that the UNEP help desk would provide support to the focal points and you know, help them to do the quality assurance on the survey, make sure that all of the free responses are there. That results then after that into the final national report on the status of Edinburgh implementation in the country, uh, which is followed by UN uh, Statistics Division receiving the results. So basically kind of same system as in, as in, as in national level, um, you submit your data into statistics department, and then UNEP you know, produces global analysis and reports and shares those online for, for the public. And then finally, the outcome of this is used to inform the civil society and the government and, and the other stakeholders in the country to know how do you improve the IDBRM implementation. And GLP is really at each step of this process, perhaps not on the statistics division process, but this is how we support uh, the global reporting. And in particular, um, uh, speaking about how can we use this data to see how effective the policies are is the evaluating part is quite important. So if we look at the, how the survey is structured, that gives us the, the most insights really about them, um, the priorities that the countries have in terms of uh, water policy. So first you'll, you'll see that there are seven questions on laws, policies, and plans, very detailed, and a country would score each question. Um, then there are questions on how do you 
within the country coordinating among sectors or the idea of capacity development how do you and all your stakeholders uh, then of course uh, data and knowledge sharing and different management pro uh, programs and finally the budgeting questions so the, those are quite detailed and it's kind of like an assessment of of the country's understanding of, of their priorities in terms of water management and what kind of instruments they're using for it which then four averages in scores among each of these dimensions they give overall indicator score and that is what is representing either from very low to very high degree of either implementation that's how we know how the country is doing so you see that the the survey is kind of like the, the barometer of how the water management is working in the country and then finally how is the P in all of that what what do we do to put uh, um to advance this process so first of all we we support the process on on three different stages at stage one we help the custodian agency so the the unap to identify challenges we bring together the stakeholders to analyze the status of water resources and the management system in their country uh, at stage two, we use the data that we've collected at stage one to develop the action plans. So we try to define these areas of opportunity and we try to turn them into investment projects that are country led and then lead to improving water resource management. And finally, at third stage, we help the countries to implement the solutions that they've identified at stage two. Uh, and in particular, those priority actions. Um, that uh, help them to increase their 651 score. And the SDG Adirom Support Program is coordinated by GLP together in partnership with the UNEP DHI Center and UNDP CAPNET under the guidance of UNEP. A bit about our results. Uh, so far, um, just from the last year, for example, we supported 67 countries only in the 2023 reporting round. So as you know, the SDGs are reported on every three years. Uh, we support them directly in, in facilitating various uh, national multi-stakeholder consultations to assess their, their progress on SDG 651, as well as we indirectly supported related actions to progressing kind of beyond the, the reporting stage. Uh, it was about, sorry, <clears throat> 4,000 stakeholders engaged um we asked people what they how they felt about this whole process and we found that about 80 percent found the consultations very helpful in identifying the challenges uh to their water management systems and about 85 percent were satisfied how well their opinions were um integrated represented in the final government response so it was not only uh, one agency one government agency filing in the reports but it was really a, an efficient consultative process in that matter. And a bit about the results of the indicator itself. Um, so you can see here how the countries are doing. Uh, so from the last reporting round from last year, you'll see from very low to very high, from red to blue, and uh, the, the country's progress really differs in terms of their, their results and how well they manage their water resources. And um, you can also see on the left part that uh, the change from of status from 2017 to 2023. Um, so we're growing, we're going ahead. And you can in particularly see that there is quite a bit of growth around medium high countries. So countries that are doing relatively well and going towards advanced water management systems. But if you look at the section one, so specifically enabling environments, what is the status of policies and laws and plans to support Adam in 2023? You would see that here it's the progress is, is kind of a bit more mixed. Um, so you'll see that a lot of countries um, have progressed, but they haven't progressed that much, not as much as overall on, on the whole indicator. And you'll see that mostly in, in, in South America, for example, you'll have the progress is mostly medium high, so the countries are mostly green, but you'll still have quite a number of countries that are on the low end, same in Central America, um, and even medium low. Most of the Europe will be high or very high because of coherence of, of policies and plans that exist there. 
And then in Africa, you really see medium low and low progress in quite a number of countries as well. And a few, unfortunately, um, have not reported. But if we look at where we have to get, so you'll see that here we have quite a bit of gap to target. So our target is to be at 2030, is to be at um, 100%. <laughs> but you'll see that from 2017 to 2023, the progress has grown nearly 8% um, average. Um, so here is projected growth. If, it, if, it, if everything continues as it should, this is how we're going to get. So in 2030, we're going to be merely about, at about 63%, I would say, nowhere near the, the targets at 91%. And then if everything goes as it should, as it's going right now, we are only going to get there in 2050. So about 20 years past the, the target that we have right now for the SDG uh, 6.5. Um, now, the other aspect of the SDG uh, 6.5 of the targets is there is also another indicator that is helping us in this assessment of how the water policies are working. So it is a 652, um, and it measures the transboundary water cooperation. So how well countries are cooperating on transboundary rivers and lakes. It is also collected every three years. Uh, they report under the Water Convention and on the SDG indicator 652 in one template. So they also report how well they're implementing in this binding legal framework, the Water Convention. Um, and the submitted data then is analyzed and then used to, to feed into political dialogue, mostly in global regional level, since it's um, the, the data on the transboundary cooperation is a bit more uh, political, a bit more related to how countries are cooperating with itself. Um, and I mean, water is one of the more contentious issues. And then convention is defined by the future program of work. So as I introduce the second aspect of the SDG 6.5.2, I'm just going to show the map of how the countries are doing from the last year. So we can see that from red to blue, this is also the, the same kind of measurements. We can see that in Asia, Latin America, or North Africa, only four out of 68 countries have their basins covered before operational agreements. So here, the progress is not going, not even near that great. And um, even though the countries are progressing, but there's still quite a lot to do. And we see quite a lot of countries are on the red and orange and yellow side of things. So in terms of national management of water resources, we are progressing, but not as much as we're expecting. But in terms of the transboundary one, we're doing even slower. And perhaps allow me just to go briefly through the conclusions. So what we've seen through the presentation is that it is very important to define the right metrics. Evaluating the policies requires kind of comparing the outcomes with policy goals. And it's very difficult to figure out what exactly, what kind of exactly metrics you can use to do that. Uh, second, we need to look at the practical application. Understanding the effectiveness means that we need to know how and whether these regulations are applied in practice. And then third, collecting data on SDG indicators is crucial. Without this data, we're not going to have the insights on how regions are doing. We're not going to have these uh, benchmarks. And then finally, having those global benchmarks, 6.5.1 and 6.5.2, they are really a unique set of indicators that allows us to assess the effectiveness at, of water policies at global level. And finally, just the message for us to discuss perhaps during the Q&A, we see that the progress is going in the right direction, but it is too slow, unfortunately, which means that we need to accelerate our efforts. Thank you so much.